Kia Ora from Aotearoa. Okay. Thank you so much. Awesome. Thank you very much. You too. Enjoy yourself. Good morning from beautiful Dunedin. It is currently day eight on our discounted cruise from Australia to New Zealand. And today is the first time we've stepped foot on New Zealand's soil. And it's in beautiful Dunedin. Look how crazy this is. This is just a railway station. Dunedin is also home to New Zealand's only castle, which we're gonna try and get to. But to be honest, this morning's been a bit of a schmozzle. We woke up and had breakfast really quickly at the local. We jumped off the ship with all intentions of walking into town, thinking it would be like an hour maybe. Turns Turns out it would have been three hours. So we quickly connected to Wi-Fi and tried to figure out how to get the local bus here. Morning, two please. Six dollars. Oh, so we need to find an ATM. Yeah. Okay. Right. Thank you. Cash only. Nice little rush for the morning. Turns out if you're coming to Dunedin, you can get the bus, but they require New Zealand cash. Or there is an ATM which isn't currently working. But we ended up just paying for an Uber and we made it. The sign behind us saying Edinburgh is very telling because this city of Dunedin had a massive rush of Scottish settlers in the 1800s and they actually called it Dunedin from the Gaelic term for Edinburgh. So it's kind of like a mini Scotland inside New Zealand. Still so Scottish, they serve haggis. And they got a sign for Edinburgh. It's only 18,868 kilometers away. There's a bunch of things to do in just so fast. There's a bunch of things to do in Dunedin. There is a lot of things to do in Dunedin, but I think we're gonna go and find the art because there's artwork. I was saying this was a gold rush town also in the 1800s, but eventually the gold dried up and now it's become sort of like a college university town. And being that, there's heaps of artwork everywhere. So throughout the streets in the center, there's all murals on all walls and things like that. So we're gonna go on an art quest. Dunedin is pretty interestingly laid out. Similar to Canberra, it kind of works in circles, except they're not circles. <laughs> the middle one is actually an octagon. So it's, it's kind of like this big's <laughs> not. <laughs> it's similar. Octagons and circles are pretty close. So it's an eight-sided middle square with all these really important buildings and like a line of sight down the streets that just looks beautiful. I did spy a tourist information center. So I think we're gonna go see if we can get like, I don't know, a map, a good map. That'd be good. A map, some recommendations of where to go, then maybe a coffee. Info center was very busy. We remembered we have Wi Fi now, and we have internet now, so Emily's gonna take us to the art trail. There's also a bunch of Scottish themed shops, and I swear we can hear bagpipes just in the air. It's totally a little Scotland. This is just delusional. Scottish weather as well. This seems to be more of a like you toddle around town and you'll just come across different murals every now and then whereas the one in Vancouver that we were lucky enough to visit is like a proper street art gallery. You walk through and every single wall and building and roof is absolutely covered in graffiti. This one you more toddle around town, there's a mural, a bit more of a walk, oh there's a pretty one over there. It's a bit more relaxing. coffee this morning with breakfast and a local recommended Maggie's which is down the street which is like coffee shop and arcade they were closed today so we've come to the corner store because we needed some caffeine
This town is one of the best representations and the most well-preserved Edwardian and Victorian era towns in all of the Southern Hemisphere, which kind of explains why every building or every second building we're seeing is so beautiful. Even though we're the only ones in here, I always feel like we have to whisper in a church. There is a beautiful stained glass windows all around. They also have these really old flags that are just beautiful. This is the first church of Otago. I might be pronouncing that wrong. Otago. It towers over Dunedin, so we had to quickly call in before we catch a bus to one of Dunedin. I would say probably Dunedin's most popular tourist attraction, right? Globally, yeah. Welcome to the world's steepest street. At a 35% gradient, it earned that record from the Guinness World Records after a few years of a broad radio broadcaster basically arguing for it. <laughs> I believe it got stolen from them for a while, but they fought for it back. And this is the steepest drivable residential street in the entire world. Has to be Dunedin's most popular attraction, right? Gotta be. Apparently tourists aren't allowed to drive up it because you can't zigzag up to account for the steepness. So they like really don't recommend it because it's quite tough. Unless you're Hamish and Andy. Uh, it's like when the Apollo is through I'm gonna make it, mate. There's a car. Oh no, there's a car. Left. We've done it. We've done it. Oh, we've done it. Oh, tell the world. Apparently the whole construction of the steepest street in the world was not intentional at all. They just wanted to lay the city out in a grid pattern and the guy that planned it didn't have the topography so he didn't know that it was going to be like this. They built it anyway. Apparently there's a grandpa who lives on this street and runs up and down it 30 times a day as his regular fitness. Pretty sure our like smartwatches are telling us like you might be dying and go to hospital. <laughs> I read online that he started his near suicidal fitness regime after he got laid off in the 1970s because it's so hard on his shoes he can go through one pair of sneakers in under a month. Crazy. We did it. Like a rocking step. As I catch my breath at the top, another fun fact about Baldwin Street is that it is laid with concrete, not asphalt like normal streets. And that is because on a hot day, asphalt would literally flow down the street because it's that steep. This is so cool. How cute is this? It really wasn't that long to come up. So I think we start a timer for the way down. That's good because it will motivate us because we actually have to get back to the ship. Time honestly flies. Go. Run. I honestly think I'd fall over. You having fun? <laughs> yeah. I feel like a little kid. Oh, look at that. The cars both going down and coming up honestly go so much faster than you think that they should. They fly past, <laughs> especially going down. <laughs> it's like at the end of the street already. <laughs> Less than four minutes and we stopped a bunch of times to take photos and videos. I guess you really pick up speed going down. <laughs> and that's the end of our time in Dunedin. I wish we had time to go to the castle, but it was going to cost 40 New Zealand dollars one way in an Uber to get there. And no public transport goes there. Yeah, not all the way. It would have been a long walk. And honestly, we probably wouldn't have made it back to the ship. And what a way to end. Steepest street in the world. I'm loving New Zealand so far. <laughs> There's quite a few unicorns on buildings in Dunedin. I've been wondering why, but then it just twigged. It's Scotland's national animal. <laughs> Hooper's step. Hooper Kane ascended Baldwin Street aged three years and four months. Could not reach the fountain. Hence, Hooper's step. <laughs> That's so cute.